Hi everyone, my name is Christopher Lay and I'll be doing a presentation over smallpox. Smallpox is a highly contagious disease that is caused by the variola virus. Smallpox is brick-like in shape and contains linear double-stranded DNA. Smallpox also naturally infects humans. This is due to its great ability to evade our humoral immunity. Smallpox is also one of the most, if not the most, deadly disease encountered by all of mankind. Smallpox has had a fatality rate of up to 30% in all of its cases. Smallpox exists in uh, one of two forms, uh, variola major and variola minor. Variola major is the more lethal and also the more common version of smallpox and within variola major there are four different types of smallpox the first being ordinary smallpox which is uh, the most common form of smallpox um, this accounts for 90 percent of all cases of smallpox uh, the next one would be modified smallpox modified smallpox is a milder form that develops in previously vaccinated patients um, the next one is flat or malignant smallpox and this is a severe variety in which the lesions that smallpox is famous for do not project above the, the skin surface. Um, the last one is the hemorrhagic or flumeant smallpox which is a very rare highly fatal severe variety in which um, hemorrhages develop in the skin or mucous membrane so this induces um, spontaneous bleeding. Uh, the second form that smallpox exists in is variola minor, which is a less common, less lethal, and less virulent um, form of smallpox. The pathogenesis of smallpox begins with its portal of entry, which is usually through the oropharyngeal or respiratory mucosa. So more commonly, this would be through your mouth or through your nose. And less common portals of entry include your skin so perhaps you had a cut and you came into contact with infected material uh, or your conjunctiva which is your eye lining and the placenta so from mother to child so after the virus has entered a human through the one of the many portals of entry uh, the virus begins to rapidly migrate towards your regional lymph nodes and this is where um, replication of the virus really takes off. After the virus has replicated itself enough, it further disseminates into your spleen and your bone marrow. After this, the virus begins to localize itself in your small blood vessels of the dermis and oropharyngeal mucosa. This allows the virus to spread into even more tissue and by the end of it your spleen, lymph nodes, kidneys, liver, bone marrow, and other viscera will contain large large amounts of the virus. The infection cycle of smallpox is one that is complex and not very well understood but it begins with the virus attaching itself to the cell. Now the way it does this is not very understood as its unique viral attachment or cell receptors have not been identified or established, but it is thought that there are probably many. Uh, it then enters the cell via endocytosis after attaching itself to the cell, and it enters the cell without its viral membrane. The virus then begins to replicate itself in the cytoplasm of the host cell. This is different from many viruses that are similar to smallpox, which replicate themselves in the nucleus of the cell instead. After replication, the virus can then spread to other cells in one of two ways. The first way being if the cell were to rupture and the virus and its material were released into the environment of the cell. The second way would be is if after replication it entered the trans-Golgi network. 
This would then process the viral material into an immature viron, into an IMB, which is an intracellular mature virus, into an IEV, which is an intracellular enveloped virus, and then it would be released and an adjacent cell might happen to uh, take this in, spreading the infection further. Throughout the stages of smallpox, there are a variety of symptoms that the patient might experience, and that includes backache, delirium, diarrhea, excessive bleeding, fatigue, high fever, malaise, rash or lesions, headaches, and nausea or vomiting is also possible. Um, if you look at the picture, about days one to three are the incubation period for say for the uh, smallpox and by day four or five we start to uh, see lesions and rashes appear and by six or ten these developed very quickly and very numerously so during day four and five the virus is starting to spread past the lymph nodes where it was replicating itself and by day 11 and 14 we start to see the uh, the papules and the pustules start to scab over. The actual origin of smallpox is unknown. The first case that was acknowledged of smallpox was in 1157 BC and this was Pharaoh Ramses V on his body, there looks to be evidence of pustules on his uh, face and head. So this puts smallpox to have ex at least existed 3,000 years. But researchers say that it could have ex existed as early as 10,000 BC. Now, smallpox existing as long as it has, has had a large impact on our history. For example, during the 6th century, Japan encountered smallpox uh, due to increased trade across Asia, more specifically between China and Korea. During the 7th century, smallpox would spread to Africa, Spain, and Portugal due to Arab expansion. During the 11th century is when smallpox really got a hold of Europe and this was due to the Crusades allowing smallpox to spread even further. During the 16th and 17th century, European colonization as well as the African slave trade would allow smallpox to be introduced into the Caribbean as well as the Americas. And as you can see from the pictures, the bottom right picture is a depiction of smallpox patients in Europe, while the top right picture is a depiction of Aztecs um, dying from smallpox. And if you can recall from history, uh, the majority of the Aztecs were wiped out from the arrival of the conquistadors due to the introduction of smallpox to their populations. Presently, there is no threat of naturally occurring smallpox. Smallpox was declared eradicated in 1980 and it was absolutely revolutionary in terms of what medicine could do then for us. Uh, it does however exist in small quantities in two research laboratories. One is in Atlanta, Georgia and the other is in a facility in Russia. The only threat smallpox would pose to us now is as a potential biological weapon, as I'm sure both research facilities are researching into in case of emergencies. And the last naturally occurring case hasn't been since 1977 in Somalia. The research laboratories are um, supervised by the World Health Organization as well as the CDC. Well that's the end of my presentation on smallpox. Here's my bibliography and I hope I could 
offer you a little insight onto the information on smallpox.